Hello all. In this lecture, we will see the database system environment. So mainly we will see the different uh, components, software components that are available in DBMS. So this, uh, this is a DBMS component modules. So if we see this figure, we have two parts in it. This is the top part and this is the lower part. So the top part mainly refers to the different uh, types of users, how the users interact with the system. So we have already seen the different types of users. So based on that, how they will be interacting with the system. And the lower part shows the internal modules of the DBMS, which are responsible for the storage uh, of data and also for uh, transaction processing. All these things will be handled in the lower part. And uh, this DBMS uh, has a database catalog. So this is stored in the secondary storage itself, even though it is shown separately. This system catalog or data dictionary will be stored in the database itself. Then we all this uh, disk access, the disk access is controlled by the operating system. So we have an operating system. So that operating system will be controlling the disk access, buffer management, everything will be handled by the disk. Even though the DBMS ha ha has its own uh, buffer management and all, there is storage uh, level manager also. We have a stored data manager module. So we, this module will interact with the database. Uh, it, uh, so what it does is it will ch uh, it needs some information to access the elements from the disk. So the store data manager module uh, controls the access to this uh, secondary storage, and also it ac uh, to access the data dictionary also, which is stored in the database. Uh, we need the store data manager. So all the database kind of things will be done by the store data manager. So this is also a part of uh, data DBMS package. Then we will see the top part first. We have the first type of user is the database administrator, DBA staff. This is the database administrator. Then we have casual users, application programmers and parametric users. So DBMS, uh, DB, uh, database entry, uh, database administrator staff, they are responsible for creating this uh, data definition or the schema or the structure of the database. Everything is created by this database uh, DBA administrator, database administrator staff. So they are responsible for actually creating the uh, database. So they will be executing this data definition language statements. We have already seen about DDL, DML in the previous lecture. So they will be executing this DDL statements, data definition language statements. So create like create table. So create table is a data, data, data definition language. So it will help him to create a table. And what it does is this DDL statement will be converted, will be compiled using a DDL compiler. So this will process all the schema definitions specified by the DL and stores the schema, the schema or the metadata. The DDL, uh, when it is compiled, we will get the metadata that is about the structure of the database. What all um, attributes are there in a particular table? What are the data types of those attributes? All those information will be uh, will form the system catalog or data dictionary. So all those things, all those things will be stored in the system catalog or data dictionary. So when the DBA staff executes this DDL statements, it will be compiled using DDL compiler. So what it does is it will store the, all the data structure type of information like size of files, names, data types of items, storage details of files, then mappings, information of schemas, constraints on the database, all those things will be stored in the data dictionary. Okay, then we have uh, privilege commands. So DBA staff also executes some privilege commands like uh, to authorize some person. All these privilege commands uh, will also be supplied by the DBA staff. Then it will be given to the runtime data processor. We will see about this later. So that's a process. Uh, so, so that is the execution of the DBA staff uh, commands. 
Then we have the second type of users, casual users. We have already seen who is a casual user and what, what it does and all. So he is an ordinary person who will be uh, interacting with the database. Example, if you are going to an ATM, you will be called a casual user. So there will be interactive queries. So he will be using that interactive kind of interfaces and all. He will be using that menu based for uh, or form based or mobile interactions or touch based interactions and all. And he will be generating uh, interactive queries. So he will be generating this kind of interactive queries here. So this interactive queries will be compiled by the query compiler. So this will be compiled and it will be converted into an internal form. So this is an external schema. So those that need to be converted into an internal or conceptual schema. Uh, so it will be converted using the query compiler. Then we have a query optimizer because there will be a lot of uh, operations that will be carried out by the casual user. Maybe uh, he will be asking for some data and he will be searching for some other thing. So all these items may not be processed together, uh, at, uh, may not be processed one by one. So they will take all these queries and the query optimizer, there might be some optimizations. If there are different operations in a particular query itself or in a particular transaction itself, there may be several queries. So the query optimizer will optimize it. That is, sometimes rearrangement of this operations will be needed. Sometimes uh, redundant information will be asked or search uh, needs to be executed in a quicker manner or uh, fastly. So in those cases, this query optimizer will test all that optimization thing. So query compiler uh, will be, all the queries will be given to the query optimizer and this will optimize all the queries and uh, all the optimized queries given will be given to the runtime database processor. Then the another type of user is the application programmers. They will be writing programs in programming languages and those uh, they will be writing maybe DML commands inside. They will be embedding these DML commands inside the application programs. So what it does is when such kind of programs are, are need to be executed in the DBMS, what the DBMS do is so DBMS, uh, what it does is it will do this pre-compilation. So it will do this pre-compilation of the application program. So what pre-compilation does is all the DML commands embedded in the application programs will be separated and it will be given to the DML compiler. So all the DML commands, data manipulation language commands like uh, select or selection or something uh, insertion, deletion, all these are known as uh, DML commands. So all those DML commands will be processed by the pre-compiler. This pre-compiler separates all those commands and it will be given to the DML compiler. So the DML compiler and the DML compiler compiles it. So uh, the DML uh, commands will be compiled and uh, it will uh, make it so uh, DML compiler and it also interacts with the system catalog. Here query optimizer also interacts with the system catalog. Here DML compiler also interacts with the system catalog to see the data structure, all those things have to be checked. Then uh, pre-compiler what is this is we have the host language compiler also. So this is the, if you are coding in C++, uh, then the, this will be the C++ compiler or it will be the Java compiler. So it will compile the rest of the code and the rest of the code and the DML compiler after it is compiling, after it is compiled and the uh, program is compiled, it together it will form the compiled transaction or the canned transactions. So this canned transactions uh, will be given to the runtime database processor. So this is what it happens. So all the application programs will be uh, divided, separated. Uh, will be divided into two. First, it, all the DML commands will be separated and the app program will be separated. And they will be uh, compiled separately and together they will form the compiled transactions. And these compiled transactions will be uh, given as DBA commands or queries or transactions to the runtime database processor. Then we have this parametric users. Uh, it is a bank tellers are all uh, parametric users or even when you use a mobile app and all can be called as parametric users. They simply 
supply the parameters for the transactions. So we simply check the balance in your app or check whether how the latest transactions and all. So all those are parametric users and even the bank clerks will be using the banking software for doing some kind of reports and all. So all those will be parametric users. They will be in, they will be giving this compiled transactions. So those all things will be compiled transactions and this will also be given as DBA commands. Uh, all this will be given as queries or transactions to the runtime database processor. So the low, in the lower part, we have the, in the lower part, we have the runtime database processor. So it executes all the privilege commands. So all the privilege commands coming from the DBA staff will be executed here. Then the exe, uh, it will execute the query plans. So all, there will be various queries coming from this uh, thing. So all the query plans will be executed here. Then all the canned transaction or the compiled transactions uh, with runtime parameters will be executed here. And also it interacts with the system catalog to check all these things and all. Uh, then this runtime processor will also interact with the stored data manager because we need to get data from the stored database. So it will interact with the stored data manager and also this runtime database processor will interact with the uh, with the operating system also to in order to get data from the stored database or in order to write something onto this data uh, secondary storage. Then we have another module that is shown separately that is for concurrency control. Uh, there will be different concurrent users accessing the same database so we need to control that. So there will be concurrency control softwares and also we need to back up the system and also we need to recover the system from the failures and all. So all these things modules will be there uh, in the lower part of the operating system, oh, sorry, over, lower part of the DBMS software. So this is the DBMS uh, component modules. So these are the various components in DBMS. Next we will see uh, DBMS database system utilities. So in addition to the different modules we have already seen, uh, there are various other system utilities that are also provided by the database software. First one is uh, loading data stored in files into the database. So there will be a loading capability for the database system. So if we want to load some text files or sequential files into the database, that is done by the loading system. So the loading system will do that operation. Then there will be some conversion tools will be required to convert the files into some other format or all. So all these things we need to convert into internal schema and all. So all these things will be done by the loading utility. Then we have a backup utility. We need to backup the software occasionally or daily or if some failure occurs, we need to recover also. So for that, we need to have this backup mechanism. So that utility will also be provided in the DBMS package. Then we need to reorganize the database file structure. So database storage reorganization will be needed so that uh, we need to create new access paths so that we, uh, to improve the efficiency of searching, uh, insertion, deletion, everything. Uh, we need to change the file structures and all. So all those reorganization capability utility will also be there. Then for performance monitoring and report generation. So this is actually for report generation utilities. It is actually uh, for uh, performance monitoring and all. We require this thing. Oh, sorry, report generation will be there. So we need to generate uh, reports uh, for various items. We need to check uh, which all users have access to a particular database at a particular amount of time. Like that there we need different kinds of reports at uh, different times. So we need to generate those reports. So there will be report generation utilities. Then we have performance monitoring utilities. So this is this actually monitors the database usage and gives statistics of uh, to the database administrator. So this is used mainly used by the database administrator. Then we have other functions like uh, sorting, uh, use of monitoring, data compression, like that. There are different uh, kind of kinds of utilities that are provided. 
then networking capability all these things are included in the database system at utilities then we have other tools also that are available for database designers and all then we have this database dictionary we have already seen this data dictionary or repository or system catalog it is used to store the schema descriptions we have already seen what is the use of this data dictionary so that capability is also provided in the dbms package then information such as design decisions application program descriptions then user information uca standards everything can be stored in the data dictionary we have two types of data dictionary one is active data dictionary and second is passive in active data dictionary it is accessed by the dbms software and it is used by database administrator also users and database administrator then there is passive data dictionary which is also used by users and database administrators only so mainly this passive is actually the uh, database structure and all schema description everything will form the passive data dictionary so in active data dictionary uh, some uh, form of table some uh, something from the tables will be required by ordinary users so those elements will be stored in the active data dictionary so passive will also only be accessed mainly by this database administrator uh, people then we have other tools for application development environments and computer-aided software engineering tools also in order to improve or develop softwares uh, using automated tools we have this case and all so for that there is well, there are different GUI uh, type of things like power builder for Cybase then J builder for Borland mm, then we have uh, J developer 10G for Oracle all this form uh, application development environment for this they have well defined uh, GUI interfaces and all uh, then querying updating application program development everything can be done using these tools then we have additionally communication software if we want to access a remote database system all those if there are if there are different terminals workstations if the database is stored in different locations and all we need this communication software so this communication software is also uh, provided as a tool in DBMS. So that's all about the various components of DBMS. Thank you. This is the reference. Thank you.